Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a kind of a new topic, a different topic in equilibrium, and this is what happens if we're not at equilibrium, or how can we how can we tell if we're at equilibrium or not? That's a better way of sort of framing the question, right? So, in all of the previous questions where we had type one and type two, the question basically was, um, you're you know work you know work with equilibrium concentrations to either figure out k or work with equilibrium concentrations to figure out another equilibrium concentration if you're given a K. Now this is a completely separate question um, that we're gonna answer now. And this is the question of, am I at equilibrium? You know, how can I tell if I'm at equilibrium? And so just to kind of give you a sense, if you go back, like for example, if we take a simple, um, if we take a simple reaction where we have N2O4 uh, gas, and this breaks down into two NO2 gas, and we write a K for this, this is gonna equal uh, concentration of NO2 squared over the concentration of N2O4. And so, you know, when we start this thing off, when we kick this thing off, let's say that we kick this thing off with one mole of N2O4, and then we let this thing equilibrate to give us some NO2 and some N2O4 at the equilibrium mixture. What's gonna happen is we're gonna have our little graph where we have moles on the left, and we're gonna have time over here and you know we start with our one mole, uh, and we're gonna do we're gonna do our stoichiometry. So, you know, let's say that we come down here to a certain value, and we come up here to a certain value, and you'll notice that I, I'm being cognizant of the stoichiometry. Um, for every one of these we use, we make two of the NO2. So you know I'm kind of doubling, you know, as we go along, I'm making twice as much NO2 as I'm consuming N2O4. So this is our N2O4, and this is our NO2. And we want to drop a dot on here. So let's drop a dot and let's say, you know, what if I'm here and this is my mixture? You know, so, so my concentration of N2O4 is whatever this number is and my concentration of NO2 is whatever this number is. And you want to know, you know, am I at equilibrium? Well, looking at this graph, we can tell pretty quickly that we're not at equilibrium, right? Because at this point, the rate of the forward is not equal to the rate of the reverse. They're, they have two different rates. And we're at a point where the concentrations are changing. So this point is not at equilibrium. Now, on the other hand, if I were to give you a point over here, well, that's pretty easy to see that it's at equilibrium because, again, the concentrations are no longer changing. However, if I were to just give you some numbers without giving you this graph, it would be difficult to tell. What makes it what makes this graph very powerful and it makes you allows you to see it visually is that you can actually see the change over time. So you can kind of see the rates and you can kind of see that the, the, the concentrations are changing. But you know, when you get just numbers, when you when you have just numbers, you can't you won't necessarily have this graph in front of you. So we have to come up with a way of being able to tell uh, whether I'm not whether I'm at equilibrium or I'm not at equilibrium and then another thing that we're going to be able to tell is what direction is this thing going to go in so you can kind of tell here that as this thing proceeds not only are we not at equilibrium but the forward reaction is being preferred right um, we're still consuming N2O4 and we're making NO2 so from this graph we can also see that but actually what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to come up with a way of figuring all of this out are we at equilibrium or not? And if we're not at equilibrium, which direction is the reaction going to want to go using something called a reaction quotient? So we can define the reaction quotient as an expression that is identical to Kc, but with values of concentration that may or may not be at equilibrium. So let's just use the example above um, for this. So we have K is equal to the concentration of NO2 squared Uh, divided by the concentration of N2O4. Now when we have K, we always put the little E's because we know that these are equilibrium values. When we want to define Q, we write the same expression, but we don't write the little E's. We leave the E's out, and that's because we're going to take the values that we have and we're going to plug them in. We don't know if they're at equilibrium. They might be at equilibrium or they might not be at equilibrium. It's whatever the condition is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a value of Q. And what we're going to see is if we can compare the value of Q to K, that is going to give us a 
and uh, that's going to give us a qualitative picture of whether we're at equilibrium or not and in which direction the reaction is going to favor. So Q takes on the exact same form as K. It's just that we're plugging in values that are not necessarily equilibrium values. These could be values that are at either at equilibrium or uh, before or after equilibrium. So let's look at an example. I think that's going to make it much more clear. Okay, so here's our example. We have a reaction in equilibrium where we have carbon monoxide uh, plus hydrogen gives methane and water. And, you know, we go in with a little probe and we figure out what our concentrations are for all of these gases. So at our current condition, we don't know where it's at, but we just, we just have these numbers. So under our current conditions, we have 0 0.0200 molar, uh, 0.0200 molar, 0 0.0100 molar, and 0 0.0100 molar. And that's for the respective, uh, you know, compounds. So now the question is, is, well, are we at equilibrium? And then if we're not at equilibrium, can we figure out if the reaction favors the forward or the reverse reaction? So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to set up our Q. And again, our Q, what makes our Q sort of distinctive here is that we're going to take these conditions that we're at um, and we're going to plug them in directly. We don't know if these are equilibrium conditions. They may or may not be. So let's take a look at, at, let's take a look at how we set up our Q. So we're going to write our Q exactly like we would write a K. So we have the concentration of CH4 the concentration of H2O, uh, and then we have on the bottom the concentration of CO, and we have the concentration of H2 cubed. Uh, and that's our setup. And so now what we're going to do is let's actually solve for a value for Q. So let's plug everything in. So we're going to plug in our um, 0 0.0100 molar, our 0 0.001 Zero, 00 molar, our 0 0.0200 zero, zero molar, and our 0 0.0200 zero, zero molar cubed. And when you calculate this out, you're going to get a value of 6.25. And so now we have a value for Q equal to 6.25. And we're going to compare this to our value for K, which is equal to 3.92. So let's look at some possible outcomes. Our first possible outcome is that the Q that we calculate is equal to K. Now this should make the most sense. So if we calculated a value of exactly 3.92, that would tell us that if Q is equal to K, that would tell us that we're at equilibrium. And that should make sense to most of you, because if Q is equal to K, then these values are, in fact, equilibrium conditions because they give us a value for K that is the value that is the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So that would mean that we are at equilibrium. So if Q is equal to K, we're at equilibrium. Now, the more interesting cases are what happens if Q is greater than K, as we have here, or Q is less than K. So let's think about each one of these in turn. So if Q is greater than K, so what this means is that the top is larger than the bottom. So we have more products than we should have. So we have more products than we have reactants, meaning the top part is too large um, and we have a, a little too, we have a little too much products and we have a little too little reactants. So in order to rectify that, what the reaction is going to do is it's going to move in the left-hand direction. So we're going to start to consume uh, products and make reactants to balance things back out. So in this case, in, th in this case, this is going to, the reaction is going to favor the reverse. And that will balance this out by getting rid of some of the products and making some reactants. And the opposite is true for when Q is less than K. In this case, we have more uh, reactants then we have products so we have too many reactants and we have too few products then we should have at equilibrium so in this case to rectify that the reaction favors the forward direction so these are the three possibilities so when you calculate a Q you're going to compare it to K if Q is equal to K, you're simply at equilibrium. If Q is greater than K, which is what we have in this particular instance, 
um, then what we know is that we have too many products and too few reactants. So uh, this reaction mixture is going to want to go in this direction to make more uh, reactants uh, and balance things out. And then the opposite is the case. If Q is less than K, then you have too many reactants and too few products. So the reaction will want to go in the forward direction to balance that out. So this is how we can use the reaction quotient to not only determine if we're at equilibrium, but to determine the direction in which a reaction will go given a certain set of conditions. So let's actually take a look at another example um, where we have a little, something a little bit more com complex. So we have a 10 liter vessel contains 0 0.0015 moles of CO2 and it contains 0 0.010 moles of CO. If a small amount of carbon is added to this vessel and the vessel is heated to 1000 degrees Celsius, um, Oh, so it says if a small amount of carbon is added to this vessel and the vessel is heated to 1,000 degrees Celsius, basically the question continues, predict if more CO will be formed. And then it says the K for this reaction is 1.7. Um, and then so it gives us a volume here of 10 liters. So we're going to set this up as a, a reaction quotient where we have, uh, we're given information about the CO and the CO2. And we're going to look and see if our Q is um, equal to or less than or greater than K. And that'll, that'll tell us if what direction this reaction is going to go and if we're going to make some more CO. So let's take a look at that. So if we write the K for this expression, this equation, we're going to have the concentration of CO squared divided by the concentration of CO2. Now remember, we don't include the carbon in the equilibrium expression because that's a solid and its concentration doesn't change. Okay, so let's start figuring out what our concentrations are. So our concentration for CO2 is equal to uh, 0.0015 moles divided by 10.0 liters. And so this is going to give us uh, 0 0.00015 molar. And our concentration for CO is going to equal 0 0.010 moles divided by 10.0 liters, and this is going to give us uh, 0 0.0010 molar. Okay, so we can plug these into our Q, and so we know that K in this case is equal to 1.7. So now let's calculate our Q. These are the equilibrium values. So our Q is going to be the concentration of CO squared over the concentration of CO2 not at equilibrium, but at these conditions. And so our CO is 0 0.0010 molar squared divided by 0 0.00015 molar. And so from this, we get uh, 0 0.0066 as our Q. And so in this case, Q is less than K um, by a good amount. So that means that we're definitely not at equilibrium. And so uh, Q is less than K. So if Q is less than K, that means that we have too few products and too many reactants. So in this case, the reaction is going to forward the f forward the favor uh, forward this, the reaction is going to favor the forward direction. So we are going to make more CO2. So the answer to this one is yes, the reaction will make more CO. And I think just a second ago I said CO2, but it, it's CO. So yes, the reaction makes more CO because it's going to favor the forward direction based on the Q is less than K. Now let's take a look at these concept questions because they're, they're, um, they're important. So it says, why do they add a small amount of carbon? Is this necessary for the reaction to reach equilibrium? Now this is kind of getting at this idea that the carbon does not appear in the equilibrium expression. So the question is, is do we need to have carbon around at all in order for this thing to, to work? And your tendency might be to say, well, no, the carbon is not necessary because this, equi this equilibrium doesn't have any, doesn't include, the equilibrium equation doesn't include carbon in it. That's actually incorrect. Even though the equilibrium is not going to be affected by the amount of carbon, the CO2 still has to react with carbon in order to make CO. So if you had no carbon, then you could not make CO because the reaction can't go forward. Carbon is still a reactant. It just, it turns out that the amount of carbon doesn't control the equilibrium mixture. So it's still a reactant. It still needs to be there. The CO2 still needs to react with carbon in order to make the CO. 
but the amount of CO that's in there, if you had one gram or 100 grams, as long as you have enough carbon in there to react with the CO2, then you'll, the reaction will go to the predicted equilibrium. If there were no carbon, then the CO2 and the CO would just sit there because the CO2 would have nothing to react with. It couldn't go forward. Okay, and then this one says, uh, assume that the reaction reaches equilibrium. What would happen if you removed some of the CO from the reaction mixture? So let's think about this one. So we get this thing to be at equilibrium and then Q is equal to K. Uh, so assume the re we reach equilibrium. Now, now we're gonna take a little bit of CO out. So if we have uh, Q being equal to the CO squared divided by the concentration of CO2. So if we decrease the concentration of CO, what's gonna happen to, the con what's gonna happen to Q? So if we decrease the concentration of CO, CO, then the value for Q is going to go down, and Q is going to become less than K. And so what's going to happen is, is the reaction is going to favor the forward direction again. So by adding or removing product or reactants, we can actually influence this QK balance and change things. And that's actually what we're going to see in the next video.